Hello gorgeous, welcome to Storytime with Jay and this is the last in our series for this month um, and I've chosen one of my favourite books, uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's really worth visiting his website, he sends out a newsletter every week and um, I love the quotes in there, they're really inspirational and help me keep focused. Um, the premise of this is tiny changes, remarkable results, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. And I have to say, I read this book years ago and then I was gifted this book a few years back and um, I've listened to it many times and it's a really useful, useful, practical book. I highly recommend you read the whole thing. I'm going to um, just read chapter five which is called The Best Way to Start a New Habit. And I thought, considering that this is going to go out um, right at the end of this year, it, and we're talking about resolutions and all that crazy stuff, um, that I thought this might be a useful chapter. So I hope you enjoy it. The Best Way to Start a New Habit. In 20, or 2001, Researchers in Great Britain began working with 248 people to build better exercise habits over the course of two weeks. The subjects were divided into three groups. The first group was the control group. They were simply asked to track how often they exercised. The second group was the motivation group. They were asked not only to track their workouts, but also to read some material on the benefits of exercise. The researchers also explained to the group how exercise could reduce the risk of coronary heart disease and improve heart health. And finally, there was the third group. These subjects received the same presentation as the second group, which ensured that they all had equal levels of motivation. However, they were also asked to formulate a plan for which they would exercise over the following week. Specifically, each member of the third group completed the following sentence. During the next week, I will partake in at least 20 minutes of ex vigorous exercise on, day, at, time, in, place. In the first and second groups, 35 to 38% of people exercised at least once a week. Interestingly, the motivational presentation given to the second group seems to have no meaningful impact on the behaviour. But 91% of the third group exercised at least once a week, more than double their normal rate. The sentence they have filled out is what the researchers refer to as an implementation intention, which is a plan you make beforehand about what and where to act. That is, how you intend to implement a particular habit. The cues that can trigger a habit come from a wide range of forms. The feel of your phone buzzing in your pocket, the smell of a chocolate chip cookies, the sound of ambulance sirens. The two most common cues are time and location. Implementation intentions leverage both of these cues. Broadly speaking, the format for creating the implementation intention is when situation X arises, I will perform response Y. Hundreds of studies have shown that implementation intentions are effective for sticking to our goals, whether it's writing down an exact time and date when you will get your flu shot or recording the time of your colonoscopy appointment. They increase the odds that people will stick with habits like recycling, studying, going to sleep early, stopping smoking. Researchers have found that voter turnout increases when people are forced to create implementation intentions by answering questions like, what route are you taking to the polling station, at what time are you planning to go, and what bus will you take to get there? Other successful government programs have prompted citizens to make clear plan to send taxes in on time or provided directions on when or where to pay their late traffic bills. The punchline is clear. People who make a specific plan for when and where they will perform a new habit are more likely to follow through. Too many people try to change their habits without these basic details figured out. We tell ourselves, I'm going to eat healthier or I'm going to write more, but we never say when and where these habits are going to happen. We just leave it up to chance and hope we will just remember to do it or feel motivated at the right time. An implementation intention sweeps away foggy notions like, I want to work out more, I want to be more productive, or I should vote, and transforms them into a concrete plan of action. Many people think they lack motivation when they really lack clarity. It's not always ob obvious when and where to take action. Some people spend their lives waiting for the time to be right to make an improvement. Once an implementation intention has been set, you don't need to wait for inspiration to strike. Do I write that chapter today or not? Do I meditate this morning or at lunch? 
When the moment of action occurs, there is no need, no need to make a decision. Simply follow your predetermined plan. The simple way to apply this strategy to your habits is to fill out this sentence. I will behavior at time in location. For example, meditation. I will meditate for one minute at 7 a.m. in my kitchen. Studying. I will study Spanish for 20 minutes at 6 p.m. in my bedroom. Exercise. I will exercise for one hour at 5 p.m. in my local gym. Marriage. I will make my partner a cup of tea at 8 a.m. in the kitchen. If you aren't sure where to start your habit, try the first day of the week, month or year. People are more likely to take action at those times <clears throat> because hope is usually higher. If we have hope, we have a reason to take action. A fresh start feels motivating. There is another benefit to implementation intentions. Being specific about what you want and how you achieve helps you to stay, say no to things that will derail your progress, distract your attention or pull you off course. We often say yes to little requests because they're not clear enough about what we need to be doing instead. When your dreams are vague, it's easy to rationalise little ex exceptions all day long and never get around to specific things you need to do to succeed. <clears throat> Give your habits a time and place to live in the world. The goal is to make a time and location so obvious that with enough repetition, you get an urge to do the right thing at the right time, even if you can't say why. As the, the writer Jason Ziegler no noted, obviously you're never going to Obviously, you're never going to just work out without conscious thought. But like a dog salivating at a bell, maybe you start to get antsy around the time of the day that you normally work out. <clears throat> there are many ways to use implementation intentions in your life and work. My favorite approach is one I learned from Stanford professor BJ Fogg, and it is a strategy I refer to as habit stacking. Habit stacking, a simple plan to over overhaul your habits. The French philosopher Denis Diderot lived nearly his entire life in poverty, but all that changed one day in 1765. Diderot's daughter was about to be married and he could not afford to pay for the wedding. Despite his, despite his lack of wealth, Diderot was all well known for his role as the co-founder and writer of Encyclopedia, one of the most, incompre one of the most comprehensive encyclopedias of the time. When Catherine the Great, the Empress of Russia, heard of Diderot's financial troubles, her heart went out to him. She was a book lover and greatly enjoyed his encyclopedia. She offered to buy Diderot's personal library for £1,000, more than $150,000 today. Suddenly, Diderot had money to spare. With his new wealth, he not only paid for the wedding, but also acquired a scarlet robe for himself. Diderot's scarlet robe was beautiful. So beautiful, in fact. In fact, that he immediately noticed how out of place it seemed when surrounded with his more common possessions. He wrote that there were no more coordination, no more unity, no more beauty between his elegant robe and the rest of his stuff. Diderot soon felt the urge to upgrade his possessions. He replaced his rug with one from Damascus. He decorated his home with expensive sculptures. He bought a mirror to, to place above the mantel, a better kitchen table, he tossed aside his old straw chair for a leather one, and like falling dominoes, one purchase led to the next. Diderot's behaviour is not uncommon. In fact, the tendency for one purchase to lead to another has a name, the Diderot effect. The Diderot effect states that obtaining a new possession often creates a spiral of consumption that leads to additional purchases. You can spot this pattern everywhere. You buy a dress and you have to get new shoes and earrings to match. You buy a couch and suddenly the question, question the layout of your entire living room. You buy a toy for your child and soon find yourself purchasing all of the accessories that go with it. It's a chain reaction of purchases. Many human behaviours follow this cycle. You often decide what you're going to do next based on what you've just finished doing. Going to the bathroom leads to washing and drying your hands, which reminds you that you need to put dirty towels in the laundry, so you add laundry detergent to the shopping list and so on. No behaviour happens in isolation. Each action becomes a cue that triggers the next behaviour. And why is this important? important? P.S. In addition to her payment to, for the library, Catherine the Great asked Diderot to keep the books until she needed them and offered to pay him a yearly salary to act as her librarian. When it comes to building new habits, you can use a connectedness of behaviour to your advantage. 
One of the best ways to build a new habit is to identify a current habit you already do each day and then stack your new behavior on the top. It's called stabit, habit stacking. Habit stacking is a special form of implementation intention. Rather than pairing a new habit with a particular time and location, you pair it with a current habit. And this method, which was created by BJ Fogg as part of his Tiny Habits program, can be used to des design an ob obvious cue for nearly any habit. The habit stacking formula is, after current habit, I will, new habit. For example, meditation. After I pour my cup of coffee each morning, I will meditate for one minute. Exercise. After I take off my work shoes, I will immediately change into my workout clothes. Gratitude. After I sit down to dinner, I will say one thing I'm grateful for that happened today. Marriage. After I get into bed at night, I will give my partner a kiss. Safety. After I put on my running shoes, I will text a friend or family member where I'm running and how long it will take. The key is to tie your desired behaviour into something you already do each day. Once you've mastered this basic structure, you begin to create larger stacks by chaining small habits together. This allows you to take advantage of the natural phenomenon that comes from one behaviour leading to the next, a positive version of the Diderot effect. Your morning routine habit stack might look like this. After I pour a cup, morning cup of coffee, I meditate for 60 seconds. After I meditate for 60 seconds, I will write my to-do list for the day. After I write my to-do list for the day, I will immediately begin on my first task. Or consider this habit stacking in the evening. After I finish eating dinner, I will put my plate directly into the dishwasher. After I put my dishes away, I will immediately wipe down the counter. After I wipe down the counter, I will set out my coffee mug for tomorrow morning. You can also insert new behaviours into the middle of your current routine. For example, you may already have a morning routine that looks like this. Wake up, make my bed, take a shower. Let's say you want to develop the habit of reading more each night. You can expand your habit stack and try something like wake up, make my bed, place a book on my pillow, take a shower. Now when you climb into bed each night, a book will be sitting there waiting for you to enjoy. Overall, habit stacking allows you to create a simple set of rules that, you gu that guide your future behaviour. It's like you always have a game plan for which action should come next. Once you get comfortable with this approach, you can develop general habit stacking to guide you whenever the situation is appropriate. Exercise. When I see a set of stairs, I will take them instead of using the elevator. Social skills. When I walk into a party, I will introduce myself to someone I don't know yet. Finances. When I want to buy something for over $100, I will wait 24 hours before purchasing. Oh, I need that one. Healthy eating. When I serve myself a meal, I will always put veggies on my plate first. Minimalism. When I buy a new item, I will give something away. One in, one out. Mood. When the phone rings, I will take one deep breath and smile before answering. Forgetfulness. When I leave a public place, I will check the table and chairs to make sure I don't leave anything behind. No matter how you use this strategy, the secret to creating a successful habit stack is selecting the right cue to kick things off. Unlike an implementation intention, which specifically states the time and location for a given, given behaviour, habit stacking implicitly has the time and location built into it. When and where you choose to insert a habit into your daily routine can make a big difference. If you're trying to add meditation into your morning routine but mornings are chaotic and your kids keep running into the room, then it may be wrong place and time. Consider when you are, when you are likely to be successful. Don't ask yourself to do a habit when you're likely to be occupied with something else. Your cue should have also have the same frequency as your desired habit. If you want to do a habit every day but you stack it on top of a habit that only happens on Mondays, that's not a good choice. One way to find a right pr trigger for your habit is by brainstorming your current list of habits. You can use your habit scorecard from the last chapter as a starting point. Alternatively, you can create a list in two columns. In the first column, write down the habits you do each day without fail. For example, get out of bed, take a shower, brush your teeth, get dressed, brew a cup of coffee, eat breakfast, take the kids to school, start the work day, eat lunch, end the work day, change out of work clothes, sit down for dinner, turn out lights, get into bed. Your list can be much longer, but you get the idea. In the second column, write it down a list of things that happen to you each day without fail. For example, the sun rises, you get a text message, the song you are listening to ends, the sun sets. Armed with these two lists, you can begin searching for the best place to layer your new habit into your lifestyle. 
Habit stacking works best when the cue is highly specific and immediately actionable. Many people select cues that are too vague. I made this mistake myself. When I wanted to start my push-up habit, my habit was when I take a break for lunch, I'll do 10 push-ups. At first glance, this sounded reasonable, but soon I realised the trigger was unclear. Would I do my push-ups before I ate lunch, after I ate lunch? Where would I do them? After a few inconsistent days, I changed my habit stack to when I close my laptop for lunch, I will do 10 push-ups next to my desk. Ambiguity gone. Habits like read more or eat better are worthy causes, but these goals do not provide instruction on how and when to act. Be specific and clear. After I close the door, after I brush my teeth, after I sit down at the table, the specificity is important. The more tight bound your new habit is to a specific cue, the better the odds are that you'll notice when the time comes to act. The first law of behavioural chain is to make it obvious. Strategies like implementation intentions and habit stackings are amongst the most practical ways to create obvious cues for your habits and design a clear plan for when and where to take action. Chapter Summary The first law of behavioural change is to make it obvious. The two most common cues are time and location. Creating an implementation intention is a strategy you can use to pair a new habit with a specific time and location. The implementation intention formula is I will behaviour at time in location. Habit stacking is a strategy you can use to pair a new habit with a current habit. The habit stacking formula is after current habit, I will new habit. Amazing. So tell me, what did you learn? What did you love? What did you like? And what are you going to do to habit stack a new habit that you want for you moving forward this year? Let me know in the comments below. Sending you loads of love. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you do, let me know and like and subscribe for more.